I'm Javier Garcia, Chairman of the Department of Anesthesia, Critical Care and Pain of the Puerta de Hierro University Hospital, Madrid, Spain. I'm very happy to be here to present these uh, videos. My background mainly is in both sides, critical care and anesthesia, and in both sides, pediatric and adults. Now we are going to see the hemodynamics effects of a good maneuver in basal condition in an alive real model. So the first thing I want to introduce is this is this software that I highly recommend to use uh, for, for the recruit maneuvers. Why? Because it's a safety here, because you can check and set every single parameter you need before doing it. And when everything is fixed and you are totally okay with the parameters, with the pressure and number of breath in every single step, then the only thing you have to do is to push the button. Whenever you push the button, the machine is going to do for you, so there is no way for mistakes, because uh, I mean, any, any human uh, mistake can be there. So in this case, we are going to choose like a mixed parameter, because uh, from our studies for children, we don't recommend to go further for maximum pressure of 30 and never use more than 15. And for adults, we recommend to go up to 40 of maximum pressure and 20 of maximum breath. Never more than that, because otherwise you are going to have more hemodynamic repercussion. This is like a mixed model, so we are going to go for these parameters. So we push start, and the good thing is like we are going to see in the same time the real consequences in all sides. Here in red, we have the blood mean blood pressure. In yellow is the pulmonary uh, uh, mean pressure. And here we have the PEEP, dynamic compliance, and PVI. So we did the maneuver five minutes before, and you can see all the effect. The blue line is central venous pressure. And as you can see here, during the uh, pressurized moment, during the, the maximum pressure, there is an increase always in central venous pressure. The blood pressure is going down by 20%, and one important thing to remember is that like pulmonary artery pressure is increasing a little. But this only the, the, the duration of this effect is very short. It's only during the six or five or ten breaths in the maximum pressure. That that means like all the, all the patient recovery immediately. Pulmonary pressure goes down, um, um, mean uh, blood pressure is going up, and central venous pressure is totally normalized. So obviously in PVI you see perfectly the effect, how it's increasing during the overdistension, and then you recovery after that. So here you have all the effects or the hemodynamic effect in real breath by breath um, uh, situation. Now we are going to see the effect in a, a, a live model of distress. What is the benefits of a recruit maneuvers and set the minimum amount of PIP to keep the lamps open? With this tool, it's very, very easy to see all the ef beneficial effect. Here, before the, here we have the maneuver. So before the maneuver, I start uh, to increase PIP. Without no recruit maneuvers, PIP of 5, PIP of 10, PIP of 15. As you can see here, any effect of pulmonary uh, pressure. Now we perform a very short very short um, uh, recruit maneuver, only 10 breaths, uh, maximum pressure of 14, 40, and uh, peak pressure of 20. And as you can see here, the blood pressure is going, uh, is going down, but much less than in the basal situation where the lungs are totally uh, healthy. In this case, the lungs are with the distress, are more stiffy. So the hemodynamic repercussion in the arterial side is, is, is being much lower. And one important thing I want you to fix, see the effect, this is the yellow area, is the pulmonary uh, pressure. See how whenever you reopen the lungs and uh, re remove all the hypoxic vasoconstriction, see the good benefit from the right ventricular function. If you remove all the hypoxic vasoconstriction, then the pulmonary resistance going down and then the right ventricular function can work much better. So you can see here how the blood pressure is going up little a little. The red area, that is the blood pressure, is going up, and the yellow area is after the recruit maneuver is going down, going down, going down, normalizing the pulmonary uh, pressure. So this is very important concept. Uh, if you give PIP in a distress syndrome in an increasing way, 5, 10, 15, whatever, 
the consequences of the pulmonary resistance is totally different than if you perform a recruit maneuver, reopen the uh, atelectasis areas and the collapse area, and then you set the minimum amount of PIP, you see all the benefit sides of this maneuver. So even with the same amount of PIP, so with this tool and these trends, it's very easy to see all the effects. And coming from the beginning, see how important it is to have all the tools at the same time. Because if I don't have this and I only have the dynamic compliance and the PIP, I can fix everything from the pulmonary side, what is beneficial for the lungs. But now, having all these tools at the same time, breath by breath, I can take the best decision for both sides, for the pulmonary uh, resistance, for the pulmonary artery, for the blood pressure, and for the sides of the uh, lungs. Thank you.